And so he rolls the window back up. And he looks over at Grandpa, and Grandpa starts to hail again, who should be watching the road, keeps looking in the mirrors. And so Christian turns around, and behind him on the road is this huge tornado. And it's about a half mile behind him. Grandpa hits the gas and starts to hail harder. The rain is pouring, hail's coming down. The road is covered with ice, so it's dangerous. But Grandpa is white-knuckled, grabbing that steering wheel, driving as fast as he can, trying to get across the dam. There's nowhere to go. There's no road that turns off. You can't just stop and let it pass you. So he's trying to outrun it. And as they get just across the dam, they're just going across the dam, Christian turns around to see where the tornado's at. And as he turns around, he realizes that they have not put distance between them. In fact, the tornado has gained ground. And as he turns around, the trailer with the boat on it starts to lift off of the ground and swing out towards the water. And in that very moment, a tree slams into the side of the truck. His window smashes open, and the truck is lifted off the ground and flips in midair. Boosh! <coughs> down into the water. I'm going to pop the door open a little wider for us, as Grandpa said. Grandpa Pearson shifted his weight a little too much, and the door swung wide. His grandpa's whole body slipped through the opening and into the water, but he managed to grab hold of the door frame. Christian barely spied him in the growing darkness as he pulled his body even with the truck. His grandpa tapped on the glass of the windshield, giving Christian a thumbs up before he pushed off the glass to propel himself toward the surface. Metal groaned, and a popping sound sent chills down Christian's spine. The force of Grandpa's weight had snapped the only connection between the trailer and the pickup, the ball hitch. When the pickup entered the water, the upside-down boat caught on a huge, jagged piece of rock. This kept the truck from descending to the bottom of the drop-off in front of the dam. Since they had fish fished this water only a couple hours earlier, Christian knew a 60-foot drop-off started at the edge of those rocks. When the ball joint snapped, the trailer released its grip from the pickup. The truck rolled to let out the air bubble, and Christian fell, head first, toward the driver's side of the pickup. He saw the steering wheel, and then the world went black as the truck slowly descended to the bottom of Lake Albert. And that's the end of chapter one. And every chapter is like that. There's, there's always something that kind of... Don't you want to know what happens? <coughs> Guess what? You gotta read the book. <laughs> I can't tell you the whole story, that would ruin it. Especially my reluctant readers. You want to read it, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Now, who's the main character? And the character Cal is uh, he's Christian's next door neighbor he's also a freshman also an athlete in fact they're both on the varsity football team in fact they both play the same position that's probably really good isn't it they're both defensive backs if you like football there's some football in here ladies if you like a little romance there's a little romance guys it isn't too much romance it's just Cal Robinson is what you would call a jack wagon, or a jerk wad, or a meanie. He is, he's the antagonist, he is one of the, the quote unquote bad guys, and what's great about it is, there was this kid that used to make fun of me in middle school because I didn't have the right jeans on, uh, they didn't have the right label on the back. So guess what? Cal? Oh yeah. That kid? Yeah. He's, he's part of Cal. And then there was this kid in high school that I really didn't like. Oh yeah, he's part of Cal too. And then there was this teacher in high school who I bored me to death and I couldn't stand him. Part of Cal. Um, Calvin Robinson 
His last name's Robinson because that's my mother-in-law's maiden name. And my mother-in-law sometimes drives me nuts. Now my father-in-law, his last name is Pearson. He loves that there's a Grandpa Pearson in there. My mother-in-law not so excited about the bad guy being called Robinson. But guess what? When you're the author, you can do whatever you want. So let's let's meet Cal Robinson. Um, Christian has met another student who's another new kid in school, and his name is Brad. And Brad's dad is the athletic director at the high school. So they're kind of in the same boat, both new to town, dads are principals, it's kind of rough. By the time he returned to the middle school fifth period lunch, the guessing game ended. Oh yeah, that's right, the, these three new students have showed up, Alexis, Sam, and Ray. And there's this guessing going on where the students are trying to figure out who they are. One of the, one of the teachers told a class the three new students toured the school this morning. A boy and two girls were joining Red Oak Junior High as freshmen. Christian heard Cal Robinson announce from his lunch table, well, I hope he doesn't plan on going out for football. We don't need another new kid screwing things up around here. Christian did not bother turning around to look at Calvin because he knew who Calvin referred to. Everyone did. Moron, Brad muttered under his breath. As Brad uttered the words, a marinara meatball landed hard on Christian's tray and spaghetti sauce exploded everywhere. The meat projectile had passed within inches of Christian's ear. When he looked down, Christian saw his t-shirt had little streaks of red on it. Brad took a little shrapnel on his own sleeve, but it blended in with Brad's black t-shirt. Fortunately, no one sat across from Brad and Christian, so they ended up as the only victims of the meatball assault. Christian slowly turned around and saw Mitch Maxwell laughing and spitting all over his own lunch. Devin pointed at Maxwell, calling him Chinaman, and Cal tried to contain his own joy. A couple of the other idiots laughed too. The only one at Calvin's table who failed to even crack a smile was Miles Jones. Do you need a napkin? Cal sneered at Christian from his table. Christian stood up, but opted not to say a single word. Watching Calvin and his buddies the previous week, he realized that reacting incited more Calvin wannabes to join in the fray. So if he's going to react, he's deciding they're just going to keep it up if I react and say something. Christian just stared at Calvin as he calmly walked over to his table and reached for a napkin next to Mitch's tray. In doing so, Christian intentionally knocked over Mitch's milk, which poured onto Cal's lunch tray ruining his lunch. I'm so sorry, Calvin, Christian said in a steady voice. Here, use this napkin. <laughs> Christian wiped some sauce off of his own shirt and then tossed the napkin into Calvin's lap. Then Christian turned around and strolled back to his seat to finish his meal. Brad looked at Calvin's table as Christian sat down with his back to them and proceeded to finish his lunch. The laughing at the table stopped the moment Christian knocked the milk carton over. In fact, the entire lunchroom quieted, but Christian didn't care. He endured it on the football field in practice, and over the last week, he witnessed what Calvin and his friends did to other students. Cal's group strode around like they were entitled to do whatever they pleased, like everyone had to bow to the thugs. One good week of school made Christian realize that he refused to allow them to take any joy away from him. On his own, Christian could take any one of Calvin's entourage, including the big Mitch Maxwell. Christian was not concerned about his safety. He did not plan to make a stand. But when that meatball landed on his tray, he intended to walk over to Calvin Robinson and punch him in the face. Fortunately, the words of his father cracked through the thick thinking of his angry mind as he stood up. If I catch word that you're causing any trouble for other students or teachers, it will not be pleasant living in this house, his father had said. Christian planned to grab a napkin and return to his seat at his table. But when he saw Mitch's milk carton, he nudged it just right to make a mess, but not to draw attention from the lunchroom supervisors. Are they still looking over here? Christian asked Brad. Uh-huh, Brad said dumbfounded. Christian grabbed his milk and turned toward the group of boys. He raised the milk carton as if to toast Calvin's shock table. Cal's muscles tensed, and he stared at Christian and turned back around appearing disinterested, and Brad did the same. The cafeteria returned to normal, and soon Christian heard Devin telling a joke. Christian sensed Calvin was not laughing this time.
That's a little introduction to Cal Robinson.